that was my best face. And the reason why I'm using my best face is because we're going to talk about money. Oh yeah. And it wakes you want to screw your face up like you're sucking a lemon. It's a really uncomfortable conversation, isn't it? Most people really hate it. I hate it so much that I get my clients to pay in advance of the consultation so that I don't have to ask for them any money at the end of the consultation because it makes me wince. I think it makes most people wince. Ah, <sighs> but is it worse for women? And I think potentially it is. We seem to have a strange light view on value. So value to us is when we get something super cheap that was super expensive. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like somebody giving you a Christmas present and you go, oh my God, like this is like this really expensive thing. And they go, oh, don't worry, I got it for you in a sale. It's like, oh, <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't really want the thing, but the reason why you bought the thing was because it looked expensi expensive, but was actually cheap, but was not something I needed, liked or loved or wanted. It's, then why would you do that? And we do this about value all the time. So as women, we tend to value something that we've managed to get cheaper than what it was priced at. We think that that's like smart shopping. It's why, you know, secondhand shops, jumble sales, you know, anything where you can get your elbows out and kind of, I really want that jumper now it's time. Ah, the scarcity, it's the only jumper that's of that size that's left. I need it now. You know, and shops are not stupid to this. This is why instead of just having a sale rail, have you noticed that you've always got a last chance to buy rail as well? Just to get your anxiety going, I really need that object. It's the last chance to buy it. I will never see it again. There will never be another jumper as perfect as that one. What an absolute crock, but I bet, I bet, I bet you might have fallen for it because I kind of have. Um, so, the value that we put on things is about like how cheaply we can get something or, you know, the sale. We love a sale. But then when it comes to us charging money, we seem to do exactly the same thing. We seem to slash our rates, cut ourselves off. You know, if you've ever hired anyone on people per hour and you post a job, I'm serious, right? The guys charge way more than the women for the same job. I look at it and it makes me enraged. Not so much with the guys who really, I think, are practically overcharging, but you know, for the people that are sort of like, you're undervaluing yourself. So you sort of look at it and you go, oh my God, why is it that women are charging so much less than guys? I mean, you go on about, oh, it's a misogynistic male, blah, 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 and it's all the men's fault, white male supremacy, blah, blah, blah. But actually, the women are bad at doing it to other women too you get female bosses and leaders that will still charge less to other female colleagues we've got to change this this is nuts the other thing with this is a guy like in the same way that a guy will um i call it wanting the enigmatic stack you know the woman who is kind of like the thing that is worth chasing into the mist with your bow and arrow so like with a guy it will be like you know he wants the princess he wants the the trophy he wants the person who's at the top of something the expensive woman the woman who does want his money <laughs> That's why he's driving the car, because <laughs> he wants the woman who wants his money, clearly. Um, so when you sort of like see that they go for things that are more expensive, that they've had to work hard to get, they have a different sense of value. I mean, seriously, that advert, because I'm worth it, like guys seem to actually think that they are worth it. So they're willing to pay a little bit more money for the stuff that they kind of go for, which means that other guys will rate their price as higher than a woman will because if they get into a business kind of like loggerhead thing it seems to be fun they love haggling and the the fight of the kind of the da 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 and I don't know whether or not it's because we don't like go out hunting anymore but suddenly they love that environment where they can feel that they've won at something so there has to be a certain amount of kind of like strength and difficulty and pull in order to feel like you've achieved something. And then to be honest, when I say all of that, I want to just sort of like stand back from life. And I think, my God, like, would we ever get to a point of uh, just existential crisis for one second? Will we ever actually get to a point of like world peace when actually the one thing that we really actually enjoy is the capitalism bartering fighting trying to get one over on another human being we love it when the underdog pulls through and does well and gets to the finish line we love all of that but in order to get the underdog to get to the finish line in order to have the breakthrough in order to be the winner there has to be obstacles in the way of every single thing that we do so half the time i think in life why can't people just be bloody kind why can't they be kind why can't they be nice and generous and help other people and just be all heartfelt and loving and warm 
reform like why do people have to hike up their prices or do this or do that or manipulate or salesy difficult money related stuff when we know that there are children starving and there are people out there with really no money and the people out there who really can't afford stuff and especially the people who really can't afford self-help which is why I've got all of these campylated courses that I'm doing quite cheaply it's because it's who we are isn't it it's who we are and if you you can't have a winner without a loser and we seem to be ingrained right the way through history you know I mean I'm not saying that you know um, you know Game of Thrones is historically accurate or anything like that but there's always going to be the Robin Hood you know there's always going to be the fighting against the rich against the poor there's throughout history we've had ah oh, I know I'm going to plant my flag here and that means I own this place you know this seems to be ingrained within our nature and maybe without a shift of consciousness we're just utterly going to be bar stewards forever and that is the state of humanity and that's who we are but maybe there's one little choice that you can make inside of yourself which is realize that the pursuit of money is the pursuit of freedom it's not the pursuit of oh well i just want to be able to drive my fancy car and be able to pull young women who want to take money off me in my fancy car but the pursuit of money is the pursuit of freedom and if you can be free to do the things that you want to do and of course it is a little bit like the american dream the british dream whatever the dream the dream is i had a dream um is because we want to be free that's the ultimate thing it's the freedom to go where we want when we want how we want to work how we want to live how we want to be as generous as we want so instead of thinking about money think about freedom think about the freedoms that you want and then if somebody's trying to take your freedom my god wouldn't you fight for it wouldn't you fight for your freedom when someone tries to make you lower your rates tries to make you um work for minimum crappy awful wage Nah, they're taking your freedom you don't want to stand for that you don't want to stand for that so if you can equate money for freedom i think that you'll end up having far less money blocks because certainly you're going to actually stand your ground and say this is what i'm worth because i am worth being free because that's all we've ever really wanted all right rant over and out